Okay, let's talk about the new 2020 iPad Air. This is a device that's had a pretty significant update this year. They've changed the exterior of the device. It looks a lot more like the existing iPad Pro lineup. They've changed the interior. They've added, obviously, like the new chipset, but they also added some features that have never existed on any iPads before. So let's just dive into this thing. I'm gonna go into the aesthetics first because that's probably one of its most interesting draws. Like if you're coming into the iPad world and you're looking to purchase one, one of the reasons why you might be interested in this one, one of the big reasons is because it looks nice. This looks a lot nicer than a regular iPad, right? Because of the thinner bezels, the more modern design language, it is a really nice looking machine, really similar to the 11 inch iPad Pro. It's got the same shape, same size. The bezels are a little thicker on the iPad Air, so it's got a 10.9 inch screen instead of an 11 inch screen, but it's got the same holes for the speakers on the sides and the same smart connection on the back. So if you have accessories that worked for the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pro, the 11 inch one, they'll very likely work for this model as well, the new iPad Air. So I wanna dive into the screen first because I think that's the most important feature to me. This new screen has true tone and good brightness, but it is a 60 Hertz display. I've talked about 120 Hertz and just high refresh displays in my phone reviews, and I have a very particular kind of mindset about that stuff. Like when it comes to phones, I feel like high refresh screens are nice, but they're not really game changing. When it comes to tablets, it's a slightly different story. So it depends on what you're doing, but I really feel like if you are someone who's using a pen, like the Apple Pencil for the input, if you're drawing or writing, having a high refresh screen makes a significant difference. And that was something that I noticed right away when it came off of the iPad Pro. Like the tablet that I've been using the most of over the past little while is a 2018 iPad Pro with a 120 Hertz display. And coming onto this, the 60 Hertz display on the iPad Air is a noticeable step down for the Apple Pencil experience. Now, I'm not a digital illustrator or an artist of any sort, but I can tell that there's some kind of latency or lag that doesn't feel as natural as the 120 Hertz display on the iPad Pros. Then again, this is a significantly more expensive machine, the iPad Pros. I would say that if you're someone who uses the pencil frequently, I would lean more towards the iPad Pro, even older models, just because of that faster refresh screen. It makes a big difference when it comes to the Apple Pencil input. There's also the advantage you get with games, right? Some games in the App Store allow you to play with high refresh rates. I play a game called Dead Cells, and it's this very reaction-based game where you kind of have to press buttons based on what's happening on the screen really quickly. And I do find that it performed better when I'm playing on the iPad Pro. It's just a smoother and more visually fluid experience. And it doesn't just apply to action games. There's a whole bunch of kind of chill and relaxing titles as well on the App Store that can benefit from high refresh screens as well. But the 60 Hertz panel on the iPad Air will handle everything else just as well. It's just slightly smaller than the 11 inch iPad Pro. Now I wanna move on to the new feature this year. It's the presence of a touch sensitive power button. It's got Touch ID baked right into the power button of the device. Now this implementation of Touch ID took me a little bit of time to get used to. Number one, the location is different, right? My muscle memory has always just been going to the bottom or just depend on Face ID to open up my iPads, but you gotta just make an effort to go up there. Normally with an encased iPad, the moment you open it, because of the magnet system, it automatically turns on. You don't have to physically press most iPads to power up, but now you gotta make that, that mental like note, just like you gotta hit that even if you have a case that automatically turns the device on. Secondly, it's not a super fast Touch ID. It's slower than I would have expected coming from such a fast processor. Like the A14 is a beast, but there is a bit of lag when you're trying to unlock the device. I do prefer unlocking an iPad with Face ID over Touch ID. Okay, under the speakers, this has a two speaker setup, which honestly sounds almost identical to the quad speaker setup from the iPad Pros. The bass there is stronger and the system gets a little bit louder overall, but the double speaker on the new iPad Air is just so much better than anything they've had in the past with regular iPads or iPad Airs because now there's speakers on each side. There's one on the left, one on the right, so the audio experience is just so much more complete than it has been in the past. Now in terms of performance, the A14 in the iPad Air is really fast, like impressively so. In many cases, it matches, if not beats, the current iPad Pro chip, like the A12Z. That being said, there is a RAM difference. There's four gigs of RAM 
in the iPad Air, six gigs on the iPad Pro. But when it came to my real world usage, I found them very similar. Like I would have thought that a four gig machine running two concurrent apps with the split screen would just be sluggish, but it really wasn't. I do think that in time, because Apple's software updates are sometimes limited by RAM, that the six gig iPad Pro is able to go a little bit further into the future. Now, I wanna move on to the discussion of a purchase decision. So should you buy a new iPad Air? So this machine, the 2020 iPad Air, has a few things that really separate it from the base model iPad, right? It has access to the second gen Apple Pencil. It has access to the Magic Keyboard, like a really good keyboard, arguably the best keyboard that exists for tablets. It has access to USB-C charging. It has access to a bunch of really nice colors. Like, let's be real here. Those colors are going to be a very powerful draw for people to spend a little bit more money to get an iPad Air instead of a regular iPad. Now, the question you should ask yourself, if you're interested in a device like this and you're like, should I get the iPad Air? Or should I just go with the kind of basic iPad? It's really about usage, right? If you're going to be using a pencil frequently, or you're gonna be typing on your device, on your iPad frequently, then I would go for this because these two alone, like this second gen Apple Pencil is so much better than the first gen. The access to this Magic Keyboard is something that is, I mean, I've reviewed this before previously, but it's a really good typing experience. It rivals, it rivals laptops legitimately. It's actually better than a lot of Windows laptops, but it's a really good keyboard and you don't have access to this Magic Keyboard unless you have an iPad Air, like the new iPad Air or the much more expensive iPad Pro. Now, there's another question of should you go for the iPad Air or the iPad Pro? And this is a big jump up, unless you can score a 2018 model. If you can somehow luck out and get a two-year-old model that's refurbed or whatever, I think the best value is 2018 iPad Pro. But if you have to buy a new 2020 iPad Pro and you're deciding between the two, it really comes down to the, pen, like the 120 hertz screen. Can you take advantage of that pencil and that refresh rate of the Apple Pencil with that screen? And if you can, and if you want it for your workflow, I'd suggest an iPad Pro because the 60 hertz screen on this, there is a limitation. But there you have it. That's my review of the 2020 iPad Air. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.